show you how to download uh, and install our server software that we use at streaming.com. So the first thing you do is going to click on the link to download it and then you're going to click on the save. We're going to save it to our desktop. You could either open or save it either way. Um, so I'm going to click on save and then it's going to ask me where I want and I'm going to put it to the desktop. Okay. We're going to save it here and then it's going to put it on our desktop for us. There's the beep. All right. And then if you look right here and we double click on it and uh, when we double click on it you'll get a, a box that pops up to unzip it it'll either be a WinZip application or in this case I'm using stuff it and I'm going to extract it close out of these things here there it is right there okay right here on the desktop so then we just double click on it this software is really easy to use. Most of the time you'll just have to press next and it will automatically do what you want it to do. Uh, so it's pretty foolproof. But we're going to click through here. Uh, this location is fine uh, where we want it. So we'll just do next again. And it's ready to install. We'll do next again. Okay. Now it's being installed, you can see. All right. A couple more seconds here. It depends, of course, on how fast your internet connection is, how fast to get downloaded, and then how fast your computer is and how quickly it's installed. So it's all installed now. And we'll be able to find it if we go to our start and we go to programs and then we go to Unreal Streaming and then uh, Live Server Configurator. Okay, and then we're going to click on that, and that'll actually be the live server program. Now, this is the program that's going to take our information from our camera and upload it to the server that we're going to stream from. Okay, so uh, you can see a couple important things on this software. One is right here, uh, and these are the list of what cameras you have attached. Right now, we haven't set any up, so there aren't any here. Uh, if you look down here at the bottom, you'll see live server is running and that's important because this is a live server program so you want to make sure it's running you can uh, do a couple things here you can add a new media source add a new camera uh, you can stop the live server um, or you can do uh, restrictions on it um, we're going to add a new media source uh, you can also do it by right clicking on live sources and do add new media source like that so that's what we're going to do let's add our media source going to add a video channel. You could just do audio if you wanted to do like a radio show, but we're going to do video and audio. You see when I put the check mark here in the box uh, that the camera pops up that I have attached to the computer. In this case it's a USB camera and so we'll just select that one and, we'll be in, and then we'll do next. Uh, it could be uh, if you have a video capture card it will be listed here or uh, if you have a tuner card, whatever you have connected that has video inputs will be on that uh, location. So and then you just select the one you want and do next. You can of course do multiple cameras from one uh, set of software here. So you could do four different cameras if you had four different inputs listed here. Okay, so we'll do next. And then it says capture uncompressed video. That's what we want to have it do and apply software compression. That's what we want to have it do. So that's all set. We'll just do next. Don't need to think about that. Now here you'll see uh, it'll ask you for the frame size, how big of a frame, and I usually do 320 by 240. Your capture card might allow different sizes. This one does. Um, so, but I like 320 by 240. Frame rate at 15. Again, you have different choices, but 15 usually will be fine. Um, and then allow player to take snapshots of live video. If you want people to be able to do a capture of the picture that's streaming, uh, you leave that check mark right there. Okay, and that's fine with me. So I'm going to do preview, and then this will show our camera. You can see me right there. Hello. All right, so everything's working. So, and then we just do next. Okay. Now this is where you can put things on the live stream. You can put your logo on there, you can put timestamp on there, you can put text on there. I like to put the time on there uh, so that you know it's working if things aren't moving around very much. Uh, you can just press config. It'll ask you to pick the color. Yellow is fine. And then this is how solid it is, or transparent, and we're going to go totally solid. And then which corner it's in. And I'll do the upper right there. Okay. 
All right, and then if we preview again, you'll see in the upper right-hand corner here uh, that the date and time is there. So that's perfect. All right, and then we'll just do next. Same with audio. We'll click on audio, select our audio input. I have a microphone connected and my camera. I'll just use my camera because I'm using my microphone for other things. Uh, and so we'll do next. And then same thing, capture uncompressed audio and apply software compression. Perfectly good. You can test your microphone. I'm not going to do that. I know it works. You can also add audio transformer, special audio um, things in there if if you needed them. I have never done that, but you could if you had something special you wanted to do, make your voice sound weird or something like that. Next, again, uh, how you want it delivered. The stream, I like to do real time, so if you're doing a video conference or something, as soon as you say something, that's when it's showing up on the web. If you do buffered, it's a little bit uh, smoother, um, but it's a little bit delayed, so I like to keep it real time. And then I typically do slow DSL here. Um, you can do different connection speeds, but this will give you a nice smooth stream that everyone will be able to watch really well um, and it, it won't uh, be too taxing on the bandwidth or anything. So that's the one I like to use and we'll do next here. And then this will be the name of your camera. I'm going to call this one video. Okay and then next and then you can record this if you want uh, the problem is it'll fill up your hard drive so you only want to do recording when you really want to record something that you know is important okay and then we'll click finish and then you'll see it's added uh, to our list of live sources our one camera right there now most people this is this is where they stop and this is why it doesn't work so the next thing we need to do is uh, right click on this a one video and then um, we're going to, you could update it. If you made a mistake, you could press update and you could change any of the settings that you just did. Uh, that's a really nice way to do that, but we didn't make any mistakes, of course. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to connect to media server. So we need to connect the, the stream from our camera on this computer to our server where it streams to the thousand people that are going to be watching. That's the beauty of this software. Instead of streaming it right from our computer and having all that bandwidth hit our computer here, instead everyone gets the feed from the server and so all the bandwidth and everything com comes from there and that's where uh, we have a really fast internet connection and where we have lots of bandwidth. So um, that works out perfect. So what we need to do is connect to that server and that's what we do on this page so here we put the IP address of the server in this case my server is streaming.com uh, and it's got a domain name but it could be an IP address you can put the IP address in there too either one um, port it'll always be 5130 that'll be correct um, alias of dynamic live source that's video which is what we just put in on the other screen and then our password now if we have our password right and, and our, the person that hosts our server uh, gives us all this information and we entered it all correctly, uh, then when we press connect here, it should say, it should switch to connected, which it does, and allows us, uh, and this button changes to disconnect. So that everything went fine. If there was a problem, if we had the wrong password or anything, it would say last error, it would say um, uh, password incorrect, something like that. And when you see we here, we, we have checked automatically try to reconnect if connection breaks. So if we lose our interconnect, internet connection, excuse me, uh, temporarily, the software will automatically try to reconnect it. Uh, so that's real nice. So now we're all set. We're all connected. Uh, if we went to the internet right now, we would be able to see our ourselves live on the on the internet on the web page. Uh, again, your host of the server would tell you how to do that and where that's at. And uh, you can see down here, this information changed uh, to show the server that we're connected to. That's the IP address of that streaming.com that we did. Again, the live server is running. Now, it's important uh, if you were to shut down your computer, you can close out of this, actually, and it will keep running in the background just fine. Uh, but, but if you shut down your computer, that software will stop. And so you have to go back in. You'll have to re-go to um, start and programs and unreal streaming and live server configurator and reconnect if you shut down your computer okay so thank you very much if you have any questions you can always email us just go to streaming.com and we can help you out thank you very much bye bye